Hello, I'm Kathy Bennett. Deaf culture is comprised of a variety of things. It's behaviors of a group of deaf people with their own language and history, art, traditions, beliefs, values, and shared community, all which deaf people hold in high regard. Let me clarify the terms deaf culture and deaf community. Using the analogy of an apple, the core of the apple would be deaf culture. The meat of the apple would be deaf community, and anyone is welcome to be part of that group, but the core really is only deaf people. Similar to a group such as Native Americans, the inner circle really are only the members of that group. Let me talk a little about the different parts of deaf culture. First language. There are over 200 different sign languages around the world and different deaf communities as well. Of course, sign language is not universal. Each country has their own sign language. ASL is one of the languages used by deaf people ASL has its own set of rules, um, non-manual signals, phonology, morphology, uh, syntax, and semantics. Those are all part of ASL. ASL and deaf culture really can't be separated. They're really interwoven. Language is an essential part of any culture, and the same can be said for ASL and deaf culture. History is the second component. One famous historical deaf figure was Lorraine Clare. A second historical figure was Thomas Gallaudet. He was hearing but deeply immersed in deaf culture and in the deaf community. The first deaf school in the United States was established in 18, 1817. We're grateful to these two men who were so important in deaf history. In 1864, Gallaudet College, now university, was established. It's a place where many deaf individuals go to earn their degrees. Another key figure in deaf history is George Veditz. He was a deaf man. He worked to preserve ASL for future generations. At one point, ASL almost disappeared and deaf culture along with it. George Vettis realized the importance of filming and preserving ASL and archiving the history of ASL. We're grateful to George Vettis. A fourth individual important to deaf history is William Stokoe. He was a hearing man that entered Gallaudet University and became immersed in ASL. He posed the question, is ASL a true language or just a form of communication? He did a vast amount of research and found that ASL is a true language and published these works in the 1960s. We're appreciative of the dissemination of this information leading to the recognition of ASL as a true language. A third are the beliefs and values that the deaf community hold dear. First is the visual nature of sign language and the eyes and the hands. ASL itself and the connections established when attending a residential school for the deaf. Socialization is very important, shared information, social media 
now has great importance, being able to VP and video conference. Equality and accessibility, these are values that the deaf community share. Of course, central to deaf cultural identity is the use of sign language. Fourth is behavioral norms. A part of deaf culture is also the tendency to be direct in conversation, not beat around the bush, uh, but be direct. It minimizes misunderstandings. When giving introductions, it's common to say who they are, where they're from, and a little bit of background information so that connections can be made. The deaf community is such a small world. Attention getting is done by tapping someone, flashing lights, pounding the table. That's part of deaf culture. Did you have much snow at your house? Just a little. We had quite a bit of snow. Not too much. Let's ask Santiago. Did you have a lot of snow at your house? Oh, yes. Did you? Did you have a lot? Did you have much snow? Just a little. Did you have a lot of snow? Yes, I did. Are you going to go for ice cream? Yep. I'm going to buy some ice cream. Hey, ouch. Why did you do that? Information sharing is also important. You might say you're going to be late, or you're going to arrive later, or you're going to leave late. Those kinds of things are very important. Saying goodbye can be a quite a lengthy activity in the deaf community. They tend to say goodbye and then talk a little more and talk a little more before they actually do leave. Maintaining a good sign environment is also important in the deaf community. People avoid standing in front of lights or in front of a window where it makes it difficult to see. There are also rules about walking through a conversation. Did it snow a lot at your house? Yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. Wow, it's really hard to see you in front of that window. Can you move over, please? Do you work at CSDB? Yep. I work in the dorms. Are you going to buy that blue dress? Do you work at CSDB? Yep, I'm learning to work. I grew up in CSDB. What are you doing? How the room is arranged is also important. Circle's the best configuration for discussions and sign. Being able to see each other easily helps everyone feel like they're part of the group. Literature is the fifth component. It's really critical to maintaining the heritage of deaf culture. Literature includes poetry, folklore and legends, fairy tales and fables, historic documentation, biographies and autobiographies, um, storytelling, and ABC, classifier, hand shape, and number stories. Those types of ASL literature are traditions that are passed down.
traditions. These include films, folklore, sense of humor, literature, poetry, and theaters. Some of the traditional deaf events are reunions, homecoming, deaf expo, deaf olympics, deaf clubs. Deaf people tend to get together for these kind of events. A description of name signs is essential to tradition. In deaf culture, a name sign should be given by a member of the deaf community. Here's an example of name signs as a tradition. Uh, my name's Kathy. This is my name sign. It was given to me by a deaf person long ago. It's part of my identity. There are rules to name signs, so it's important that a deaf person someone from the deaf community give name signs to people. My name's Chloe. This is my name sign because my mom, Kathy, gave me a name sign that's like hers. My name is Grace, and my dad gave me my name sign, Grace, because his name is Daryl. So his name sign is kind of like mine. My name is Santiago and this is my name sign. Um, and they gave that to me because I comb my hair a lot. The next component of deaf culture is art, D-E-V-I-A. This means deaf view, image art. The acronym is D-E-V-I-A. There are a great number of deaf artists around the U.S. or really around the world. There are many publications within the deaf community, nationally and internationally. There are online news sources such as Deaf Weekly, Deaf Digest, Deaf Nation, and Deaf Newspaper. There are also several organizations such as the American Society for Deaf Children, the Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf, Odyssey, alumni magazine publications also like Gallaudet Today or NTID Focus. These various different publications help the deaf community stay connected and informed about events and what's going on. There are also many different organizations. Many are national organizations, both for-profit and non-profit, for deaf and hard of hearing people. Some organizations are specific to certain interests or professions. A few examples of these include National Black Deaf Advocates, the Vedet Center, Colorado Association of the Deaf, or CAD. Deaf Women United. National Association of the Deaf, or NAD. Association of the Deaf Blind. American Society for Deaf Children. National Theater of the Deaf. Deaf Bilingual Coalition. Deaf Advocacy a whole variety of different organizations. Next is sports. There is a Deaf Olympics for summer and for winter. There is also a USA Deaf Sports Federation or USADF.
technology is an essential part of the deaf community. That technology could be something that's in their home or help them at work or within the community or in their everyday lives. Here's a few examples. Captioning for a TV or a visual alarm system, texting, iPads, laptops, computers, email, phones, TTYs. VCO used by hard of hearing individuals in which they can use spoken language but read what's being said. Hearing aids and cochlear implants, smoke detectors that are visual, uh, baby cry alarms also that are visual, smart boards which are interactive, vibrating watches, alarms, video phones, video relay services, different ways to communicate. There's also a device which can connect doorbells and alarms and phones and make these more visual with a flashing light. This wonderful technology provides equal access. Video phone is where there's two screens and you can talk to each other and see each other on the screens. It's kind of like for hearing people that use a phone and to talk to somebody else, but with video for deaf people. Hello. Hi. How many sisters and brothers do you have? Six sisters and... Basketball. I remember that um, we won, and there was a tie, and we lost. I think last Thursday was a tie, then one on Tuesday. This light connects to our doorbell in front. When the light flashes, we go down and open the door. It flashes because we're deaf and it's more visual for us to know that someone's here. In conclusion, deaf culture is a way that people within the deaf community are bonded together through shared experiences, shared interests, behavioral norms, and survival techniques. All of these unite us as part of deaf culture.